Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Best of all, it's free to do so. We're here at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. My name is Laura Burstein, Porsche Panorama contributor and automotive journalist. And we're here at the Porsche stand with Boris Appenbrink, the head of Porsche Exclusive Manufacture. We're really privileged today to be able to see the 911 Sport Classic. This is the second car in a series of four that will be done under Heritage Edition banner. The first is behind us here, that beautiful 911 Targa that we saw a couple years ago during the pandemic. And now we have this 911 Sport Classic, which is essentially a 911 Turbo, but what's really cool about it, it's rear wheel drive and a manual transmission. Boris, tell us, how did this heritage project with the four different decades come about? Yeah, I think now everything comes together for a lot of people because now seeing those numbers on the doors that were pretty uh, a question mark for the first ones with the Targa with the 50 on the door, now having the 60, you get the feeling that this mine uh, could be a continuous story and it actually is. And we will celebrate the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s of the rich Porsche history with these special edition cars. Is that customizable? Yes, it is. And um, honestly speaking, this is the most critics we get that some say, do I have to have the number on the door? But as I said, this links the heritage cars to each other. But if the customer does not want it, he can leave it away. He can choose his personal uh, number if he likes it. So you can do whatever you want as long as it's two digits. If you want to have three, it's Sonderwunsch and you can even do that. Or you can leave away the lollipop and the number also with um, Sonderwunsch and just leave the typical IROC Porsche logo on the side, which would be one of the tips I would advise, which looks really great. So as far as the 911 Sport Classic goes, this color of gray is very unique, but it was inspired by an older color in the past, fashion gray. Can you tell us a little bit about how the color and trim designers developed this special paint? Yeah. I mean, with the 992 version of the Sport Classic, there come two stories together. Actually, we had the 997 Sport Classic, unfortunately not in the US. Uh, but now with the new 911 Sport Classic, we are also there. Already there, uh, Fashion Grey was the inspiration for the Sport Classic Grey, which was a solid color. With the uh, start of the development of the new 911 Sport Classic, we said we have to do something new, but we have to stay in line with the 997 Sport Classic and this heritage and history of Fashion Grey. And so the color and trim designers really worked on it. And if you pass the car on the first view, you would think this is again a solid color, but actually it's a metallic one. So if you close to the, get closer to the paint, you see little sparkles coming out and that makes it so special. As well, we said with the 997, we had um, stripes that were um, decals. Now they are painted. So this meant we even developed two shades of gray for this car, a light one and a dark one to make this combination. What other colors are available other than the gray? Um, from a standard color palette, it's um, the sport gray metallic is the color that we developed specifically for this model. Then you have a gentian blue metallic, you have agate gray metallic and solid black as a choice from the palette of serious colors. And if this is not enough, from October on we offer even paint to sample with now 114 color cho choices on top of that. So we'll get back to more in design in a minute, but right now a lot of people want to know about the mechanicals, yeah. like wow, manual transmission 992, that's crazy. Um, tell me a little bit about how the engineers had to make that work. I know there's a little bit of a reduction of horsepower because of that. Let's talk mechanics. Yeah, absolutely, because I mean, exclusive manufacture is known for um, doing pretty cars for years. Of course, we talk a lot about leather and colors, but this time with this car, this is really a pinnacle, what we achieved with the designers and engineers in Weissach, because under the beautiful body of the car is um, a specific powertrain. With manual transmission, as you said, the 3.7 liter big turbo engine and rear wheel drive. And this does not exist in the palette of the 911 in any other derivative. So it's very special and unique. Uh, to achieve this, we started with the base engine of the 3.7 liter turbo. We had to reduce the power, but just with 30 horsepower, so 550 horsepower sound absolutely right and enough to have a lot of fun with driving. We had to reduce torque due to the manual transmission. 
um, because this combination didn't exist before and of course um, you, it has to be easy to operate and to handle. So this was what we have to do, do technically. And the biggest part that we achieved is um, to leave away this little hole in the side panel. Let's actually go down there on that note. Yeah, so let's sure. take a walk down to the rear of the car. So along with um, the design changes, some of the things that people will notice in the rear of the car include these big wide fenders, which you know people, obviously a classic nod to a design proportion, the ducktail spoiler, which is amazing. And you mentioned this, um, this hole or this outlet or inlet that is normally in a 911 turbo. It was amazing to me to hear the story because I think the average person would just look at the car and say, oh, well, you just left the hole out. No big deal, right? But according to you, this was a major, major feat, not only technically, but also kind of from a political standpoint, too. Tell me more about how that all came about. Absolutely, because you have to know that um, the uh, turbo intakes uh, for the turbo model, of course, they are kind of a characterist. Um, and people say you cannot leave away the, the holes in the side for a turbo engine car. Uh, but we said, I mean, if you see the result now, this is like a piece of art for itself, because you see the white fenders, you see the round shapes. And um, our first idea was, okay, let's ask the guys in production if we can just leave away the hole. And they were laughing out loud at us, because they said, um, you see, I have to know that in the tooling, uh, the hole for the side panel is the first thing that gets into it. So you cannot leave it away, which ended up in, we had to do our own tooling for the side panel just for this car. And um, it is actually the biggest part we ever did for a small series car from Porsche Exclusive Manufacture. It is the biggest tooling we ever had, because actually the size is like this area here all around. And this tooling is only used for the Sport Classic to create these side panels without a hole. For the political dimension, of course, there were a lot of people who said, okay, come on, this is a lot of effort for 1,250 cars. But we said, we need it. I mean, if you now look on the combination of the rear fenders, the ducktail, the Fuchs rims and everything, you cannot imagine this car with a hole in the side because this would, of course, um, yeah, bring a contrast that you maybe don't want. So now everybody is um, saying, okay, this is the most beautiful I've ever seen. But getting to it, getting the decision was hard. Uh, and this is um, true and, and typical for Porsche every time. Everything where we invest money, we have to fight hard because it makes sense. Because, um, I mean, we have to do reasonable things with our budgets and uh, also with limited uh, edition cars we have to do this. But we are very happy to have it and everybody is happy. And as well, I don't want to forget that. This also leads to the answer on the question why we built uh, 1,250 cars. First answer is, of course, it is a limited production run and it is limited by a badge inside. So this means those cars are really also focusing on collectors and really have to be special and credible. So you shouldn't do too many. But with this car and the tooling we made, we cannot do a lot more of them because this tooling that we produced is able to do this number of vehicles. So there are a few other touches that we want to talk about that make this car special. One is sort of the, the wheel design. Can you comment on that for a minute? Some would say, okay, they did this Fuchs style rim design forever. But we never did it with a center lock. And we never did it um, in this uh, kind of special treatment that we have in the little corners and areas where the biggest Porsche enthusiasts, of course, will always look. So having the Fuchs style rims with center lock is a um, premiere. We never did it before. And as well, this was one thing, if you remember the Speedster Heritage show car that we did. One of the top questions afterwards was, can we have those Fuchs center locks? And we had to say no, because this was only done for the show car. But we listened to the people and said, come on, we need to develop this. So the next car we do, we should have this. This is it. So we listened back then and now we have it. So that's the reason uh, for, for this design and for the center lock technology behind. Let's talk about some other um, details in the car. In, in the back here, we've talked about the ducktail spoiler, but there's another little fun thing in the form of the grill badge. So Absolutely. let's let's uh, talk about that. Yeah, the car all around has significant features, and it's very good that we stand here be between both cars. The heritage cars all have golden logos. Uh, the heritage cars all have the Porsche press that is called Orange Bar in the US, so the 1963 one all around, on the uh, wheel hub covers, on the steering wheel, on the front bonnet. 
Uh, and what also all heritage cars have is this badge here, which is derived from the typical badge that um, Porsche customers um, got when their 356 reached 100,000 kilometers. It was exactly um, very much this design, but with 100,000 kilometers on, and um, we decided to have it in a different color for each model. So here, as the communication color is gray, the Porsche logo has a gray underneath, and here this line is also gray. If you would look on the Targa, it's red. And the next cars that will come will feature new colors, but the design will always be um, derived from this um, typical heritage badge. So similar to the other things we're talking about, it wasn't so simple as you just make a grill badge and stick it on, just like somebody would buy one off of eBay and put it on their car. Um, you had to have a part number. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of um, uh, uh, red tape you have to go through. Absolutely. Um, maybe that is not uh, common knowledge, but everything we do as exclusive manufacture, even if it's one car or 1,000 uh, 250 has to go through the same quality checks, the same assembly line end point as all the other cars. So the demand for quality and functionality is absolutely the same. And with this batch, for example, we had to assure that enough air gets in, first thing. Um, aerodynamics, thermodynamics, it's only a round part, but this is something that takes away a l some millimeters, and this is for Weisser engineers sometimes enough, from the area where the air gets in. So this is the first thing. Second thing, this is the first part we had where we needed, uh, needed to have a system controlled screwdriver in our manufacture, because you can imagine it's quite heavy, because it's real material. So we as Porsche exclusive manufacturers stand for real material, so it's quite heavy. You can imagine nobody wants this to disappear while you drive. It could be very dangerous. So the whole construction underneath had to be done and the screws that are getting in are controlled and uh, get into a protocol in the production system for each car. And as well as you said, every part needs a part number because we are um, a big factory in Sofenhausen in the meantime. Um, and of course, every part has to find its way to the right production number. This means first, all suppliers have to be aligned, but secondly, also the whole supply chain uh, from the suppliers to the factory, in the factory, to the assembly line, or to the manufacturer workshop. I could talk for hours, but um, I think this is enough. We just know that it's very special yeah. and it wasn't easy to do. I think we'd love to move to the interior now. Yeah. So we're in the interior of the car now and there are of course some very special touches here as well. I noticed first and foremost the Pepita material but I know in this day and age there are so many regulations as far as the type of fabrics you can use and fireproof and, and talk a little bit about how um, this was adapted for the modern day. Absolutely, I mean you are already an expert on this. Um, we cannot use the old material from the past. Although everybody loves Pepita, everybody loves Corduroy and Pasha and Tartan will be the next one, so you can be happy about that soon. Um, because of the share of wool, for example, as you said, it has to be uh, durable, it has to uh, go through some uh, fireproof uh, tests and things like that. So what we did is to actually take the real Pepita pattern, so make it look as the original material, but develop it to a 2022 OEM um, automotive manufacturer level from all the requirements we had to fulfill. And that, I think, uh, worked out very well, and especially in this combination with uh, classic cognac and uh, black, it looks stunning. The other thing about the cognac is I remember you telling a story about the interior scheme was inspired by a 356 that a former Porsche designer Tony Hatter had in the studio a while back. Can you talk a little bit about the car and how it inspired the designers? Yeah, first of all I have to say that uh, my usual partner in crime Grant Larson is not here. Um, whom we did the car together uh, in the design studio and a lot of credits for all the details and finishes go to him personally because he has such a big knowledge about the heritage but he also is good friends with Tony Hatter and uh, we also worked together on several projects in the past so we knew quite clearly that we wanted to go in the direction of a cognac leather and we wanted to have a heritage touch and the interior, the color and trim designers asked us, yeah, okay, um, cognac, but which cognac? And then Grant remembered that Tony Hatter had this very nice 356 with this uh, interior and said, I mean, 
could you bring it? And he brought it with him. And then it was like a little short workshop and everybody said, I, this is it, we want this. It has the warmth, it has the cognac shape, it, it is perfect. And so from that day on, this was our mission to really create it this way. And also what we wanted to do and achieve this for the first time, it's a semi-aniline leather. So this also gets very close to the tradi traditional leathers from the past because it's more natural. Um, and it smells differently, it feels differently. You will find it's out. Really soft. You will really find out when you sit in the car. Some other touches too, as we um, know from the other Heritage Edition cars, the instrument cluster, it's green, yeah. the lettering. And then the other thing that's really interesting too is this uses open pour wood, which we almost never see in a Porsche. Talk a little bit about that decision. Yeah, it was um, uh, clearly a demand of Michael Maurer um, uh, as well. He said, I mean, we have this very nice uh, open port wood now in the 992 and very seldom, as you said, customers order it because it's not that typical for a modern Porsche. It has been in the past, but for modern Porsches, it's more unusual. Most people go for carbon fiber or painted or aluminum. Uh, but for a heritage uh, derived car, it was pretty obvious for us then to, to use the wood. Of course, you can also have leather, but I think with this uh, touch of the leather and the design, the, or this wood, this is um, the most fitting wood we ever had for a 911 character, and it works out very well on all the com composition of the car. So there you have it, the 911 Sport Classic. We're here with Boris Appenbrink. Boris, thank you for joining us, and um, if it's okay with you, I think I'm going to steal the key and go for a ride. Let's go.